Okay, good evening. Welcome to the Potomac and Chesapeake Association for College Admission Counseling's Virtual College Fair. We are excited that you're here. We have a great group of colleges and presenters lined up for you this evening and are excited to share information that will hopefully help with your college search process. So just a few housekeeping announcements from me before we get started. First, your cameras and microphones are turned off, so don't worry, we can't see you or hear you. Hopefully you can see and hear us okay though. If for some reason you can't or that changes, just send us a message using the Q&A button on your Zoom toolbar and we'll be happy to help troubleshoot that with you. Speaking of the Q&A button, that is your best way to engage with our presenters this evening. So as you have questions throughout the session, feel free to submit those anytime, starting now, before they present, while they are presenting, or after. We'll be monitoring those questions throughout the entire session as they come in and are happy to respond to those. Um, and then all of the session recordings will be posted on and available at that same StriveScan website where you signed up within about a week or so as well. So before I turn it over to our presenters, I just wanted to show you our schedule for this evening. We are, oops, I'm sorry, I clicked too far. We are session C2 at the bottom in the middle. Um, so these are the five universities and colleges we will hear from tonight. So we will start with Hampton Sydney College, Randolph Macon College, George Mason University, Virginia Commonwealth University, and the University of Richmond. And so with that, I will turn it over to our first presenter from Hampton Sydney College. Awesome, thanks Tyler, appreciate it. Let me get my screen up. All right, hopefully you all can see that. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Marshall McClung. I currently serve as Associate Dean of Admission and Digital Media at Hampton Sydney. Um, I'm gonna go over a little bit about us tonight. Hopefully not too much of the boring detail that you'd be able to find on our website. Um, I do want you to learn a little bit about what Hampton Sydney is all about on a whole and um, those things that I think make us uh, a little different than your ordinary school that you might come across. So uh, without further ado, a couple quick facts. Uh, we are the 10th oldest college in the nation. We were founded November 10th, 1775. And since our founding, we've had the same mission, and that is to form good men and good citizens in an atmosphere of sound learning. Um, so we are one of three remaining colleges, specifically four men in the United States. Um, and we are located in the heart of Virginia. We're in Farmville, Virginia. We're about an, outs an hour outside of Richmond, uh, two hours from Roanoke. We're kind of dead in the center of the state. Um, so those are a couple quick facts. And I would encourage you all, as, as you listen through the presentation, if you like what you hear, go to our website, hst.edu, to learn a little bit more information about us. Or hit me up. Uh, my email address and cell phone number will be listed at the end of this presentation. So. Um, at Hampton Sydney, we obviously think that an educated person is one who's going to do well, and we think that getting a liberal education, a broad education, is something that is going to be very, very beneficial. At the same time, we think that what you learn, while that's important, we think who you meet during your college years is equally important. Um, so I want to talk about a couple of my friends. Uh, this is Kirk Zambetti. Kirk graduated uh, back in the late 80s, um, and he does something pretty cool right now. He's actually the senior VP of sales for Yeti Coolers. He was on campus uh, pretty recently talking about his work experience uh, going from Hampton, Sydney to that big position. Um, this is Ron John, uh, Ronald Johnson. I knew him as Ron John because he and I were classmates. Uh, Ron John's currently the GM for global basketball for Converse. Uh, it was a pretty cool job to have, right? Um, this guy, this is Rob Citrone. Uh, Rob is currently a, uh, I believe it's a billionaire with a capital B. Um, he owns his own hedge fund called Discovery Capital Management. And while that's all cool and well, um, he is also a part owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers. So if, uh, if you're a Steelers fan, that's a good connection to have. Um, this is Lane Ford. Uh, if you're watching this on an Apple product right now, specifically an iPhone, uh, or maybe you just have an iPhone, uh, the reason that it exists the way it does is because Lane was one of the creative directors on the original iPhone project. Um, this is Warren Thompson. Warren started his own food company back in the day. It's called Thompson Hospitality, and it is the second largest minority-owned food provider in the country. He also services our food. And finally, this is Jared Ficklin. Jared's a buddy of mine. Uh, we graduated together. Um, he started out doing an internship at ESPN, which then led him to be a producer for the Golf Channel. So if you saw the most recent Tiger Woods documentary, that was because of Jared. The reason I wanted to go over those guys is because 
at the core of what we do, we build relationships with our students. And it has led us to having the second best alumni network in the country. So while I said, what you learn is important, who you know when you graduate is going to be equally important. And the guys that are gonna help you get a job, it's gonna be critical to your success. Um, I do wanna talk about a couple of programs at Hampton Sydney that I think are unique to us. One is our Compass program, which is our experiential learning program on campus. We want our guys to learn in the classroom, but we also want them to gain that experience outside of the classroom, whether that's through study abroad, whether that's through internships, or whether it's through uh, research opportunities. We wanna make sure that our guys are getting a hands-on real world experience. Um, we have a program at Hampton Sydney called Rhetoric. Uh, it is a program solely unique to us. I think we're the only undergrad school that requires our students complete a program and pass an exam in order to graduate. Um, but we think the most important thing any undergraduate student can learn is how to write well, how to speak well, and how to communicate effectively. So we think if you can do those three things, it doesn't really matter what you get a major in, you're, you're going to ultimately do well in whatever field you go into because you're going to be able to communicate well. So um, just a quick brief overview of that program. Um, at Hampton Sydney, uh, we believe that we form good men and good citizens. And part of that is through our honor code. Um, the very first night that freshmen arrive on campus, they actually sign the honor code in person. They put pen to paper um, and it's twofold. We have an honor code, which states that you will not lie, cheat, or steal, nor tolerate those who do. And then we also have a code of conduct, which states you'll behave as a gentleman at all times and in all places. Um, so those are very important aspects of our campus culture. And we think it, it helps define uh, the young man that we graduate. Um, we are obviously a very athletically driven school as well. About a quarter of our students are participating at the division three level. Um, and we do have plenty of guys, I'd say over 80% of our guys participating in some sort of club sport or intramural sport. If you're interested in playing uh, at Hampton Sydney at the D3 level, my best piece of advice is for you to reach out to our coaches directly, go to our athletics page, start that conversation one-on-one -on -one with them um, if they're not actively starting it with you. Uh, so whether you're on the sidelines cheering on our guys, uh, you know, a Saturday home football game, or whether in your, you're in Kirby Fieldhouse watching the basketball team, um, athletics are a very big part of our campus. Again, we are in the middle of nowhere, right? We're in Farmville, Virginia. So we've kind of leaned into that. So if you're not necessarily getting out on the field or on the court, um, we think it's important to get out there in the woods, enjoy nature, go out fishing on one of our three ponds on campus, climb the climbing wall, that type of thing. But ultimately, I think the thing that sums up Hampton Sydney most is the brotherhood. It is the bond that you're gonna share with the guys that you meet day one and finish on graduation. But it, it, this is not a four year thing. This is a 40 year thing. Um, so brotherhood's huge on our campus. We do have fun. Girls are allowed on campus just to, to let you know. I would encourage you all to apply in the fall, come see us this summer. We do have a video tour up on YouTube. So check that out. Um, it's very informative, but come see us in person. Hopefully that'll help you make a better decision in your search. And uh, for more information, here's my contact info. If you want to screenshot that, thank you all very much. Have a good night. Great. Thank you, Marshall. Yep. Okay. Next up, we are going to Randolph Macon College. Hey there, everyone. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put my information in the chat for you. My name is Olivia McGuckin. I'm one of the associate directors at Randolph Macon College in Ashland, Virginia. Um, I also put my email address in addition to our website, so you guys can take a peek at that if you'd like. Um, We'll have that for future reference. I um, just want to say thank you so much for joining us this evening. I'm also going to start my timer so we stay on track um, and we'll get started. Um, so Randolph-Macon College is a private liberal arts and sciences college. We're located in Ashland, like I mentioned, which is about 20 minutes north of Richmond, Virginia, um, and about an hour, hour and a half south of Washington, D.C., um, and about an hour and a half northwest of the Virginia Beach area, which is pretty convenient. You can see some of our stats there on the lower left hand side of the screen um, and also in the center screen in terms of our academics. Um, one of the things I think makes Randolph Macon really a great place 
um, speaking from my alumni experience and also um, my employee experience is just um, our location as a smaller um, private liberal arts and sciences college, just having access. Um, we do have an Amtrak stop on our train, um, excuse me, on our campus. So it's really convenient for students to travel up and down the I-95 corridor um, of the Northeast and down South, which just makes it just really accessible for a lot of our students. Um, you can also see where our average class size is about 16 students to one faculty member with over 50 different majors, minors, and pre-professional programs. Um, our most popular programs are communication studies, business, psychology, pre-med, and our BSN uh, Bachelor of Science four-year degree nursing program, which is really awesome. Um, you can see over on the left, uh, on the right hand side of the screen, some of our um, organizations. We do have Greek life on campus. Uh, we are a residential campus as well. We do guarantee housing for all four years for all of our students. And those housing options range from your traditional residence halls to townhouses, senior apartments, um, Greek houses, and different special interest housing as well for our different student populations. About 30% of our students are also varsity athletes with 18 different competitive sports. We are Division Three, um, and really have um, uh, done some really great things within the Old Dominion Athletic Conference and won some uh, really great championships um, and some recognition within our area. So I um, encourage you to check that out on our website. Um, you can apply to Randolph-Macon through our application or through the Common application. We have our deadlines listed there for students who are trying to get ahead uh, and get those things on their calendar. It is free to apply to Randolph-Macon, so we'd like to encourage students to submit their application if they think Randolph-Macon might be on their list just because it is free to apply um, and there is no supplemental um, part, portion of the common application as you're moving forward in that process. Um, these applications are similar to for the nursing program so just go through this process and you'll be streamlined for our nursing program as well. When we're looking at your application number one we're looking at your courses and grades. Our average admitted student has B's or better on their transcript with some type of rigor, honors, AP, IB, or or dual enrollment, whatever your um, uh, high school environment offers for you. Um, your personal statement or essay is built into your application. We ask for one letter of recommendation from a teacher or a guidance counselor, um, some extracurricular involvement, some details that you might want to share with us. Um, and then our test scores are optional for students. So if you think they would be a good way to showcase your skill set, it's great to submit them. But if you know that's not your strength, then it's OK if you don't. Um, so we can talk more about that individually if you'd like to. And then last but not least, an option to do an interview if you're um, looking to just put your best foot forward or advocate for yourself or connect with your admissions counselor who would read your application. Um, it's a great thing to do that. We have our merit-based and financial aid information on this screen. 100% uh, of our students who are admitted to Randolph-Macon receive some type of merit-based scholarship, which is the top portion of this screen. Um, you can see there's some very generous awards and uh, when it comes down to it, uh, the Randolph-Macon uh, affordability uh, section of your application and, and moving through your college decision process can be quite competitive with some of our in-state public colleges. Um, so we definitely encourage you to go through the application process and see how much merit aid you'd be eligible for, um, and then go through the um, uh, FAFSA process as well, the free application for federal student aid. Um, and you can do that with our financial aid office. Um, these are all of our wonderful admissions counselors here. Um, we are doing um, visits in the fall. We're connecting with our students, whether that be virtually um, coming to your area or uh, working with your guidance counselor. So I encourage you to connect with us. Um, we're also open for on-campus tours. Uh, we're open all summer. Um, I know that many of us on this call tonight are participating in Virginia Private College Week, um, where if you attend um, the three private colleges during that week and visit those private institutions, uh, whether that be virtually or in person, uh, the application fees for the schools that have application fees will be waived. So it's a great way, a great incentive to cut out those application fees for colleges that have them, but then also get to tour some different schools, whether that be virtually or online uh, or in person. Uh, but Randolph-Macon is in person. We have some students on campus that would be really excited to show you around. Um, we also have some really great social media outlets. Um, I would say Instagram is my favorite for catching up with what students are doing. Uh, today was actually graduation day for class of 2021. 
fun. Um, so if you want to see what graduation was like, you can check us out on Instagram um, and see how the students celebrated that process with their faculty and their families as well. And then last but not least, this is my information. Um, I personally work with all of our families from Hanover County um, and then Richmond, Virginia. So if you live or um, attend school in either of those areas, I'd love to get to know you a little bit more. Um, if you do have any other questions, I'd love to hear from you and just want to say thanks again for coming tonight. Great, thank you, Olivia. Okay, next up, we are going to George Mason University. All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you for hanging out. Uh, so my name is Patrick Money. I am the uh, Senior Associate Director at George Mason University. Uh, quick uh, history lesson on Mason. We opened up in 1957 as a branch campus of the University of Virginia. Uh, in 1972, we broke off from UVA and we became George Mason University, 17 students in our first graduating class. We've grown a little bit since that time. Uh, I'm a double alum myself, so hopefully I'll be able to provide you some perspective. But when you look at why Mason, uh, location is going to be one of the first things we talk about. We are 15 miles south of Washington, D.C., right in northern Virginia. So there is a lot of activity going on in and around our campus. When you think about access to the city, the nice thing about Mason is we are in the burbs. Uh, so you have a nice residential campus to come back to but you have the ability to get downtown DC without living the city life every single day. When you look at who we are today, uh, we're the largest research institution in the Commonwealth uh, with 37,000 total students, 25,000 undergraduates. Those undergraduates are coming from every state and 139 plus countries. So when you look at who we are as an institution, we are a global institution, not only in our classrooms, but our student organizations, and with the reach in the uh, professional job markets as our students are looking to build those resumes while they're at, um, going through their undergraduate years. One thing to note is we are the second largest residential campus in Virginia now. For a long time, that was not the case. Uh, we've had a very, very concentrated effort over the last number of years to now we guarantee housing for the first two years, and then we will house up to 3,000 upperclassmen uh, every single year. We also have faculty and graduate housing uh, townhouses that really kind of tied the community together. Inside your academic year, you're going to have a lot of opportunities, whether they are our 80 plus majors, our minors and concentrations or accelerated masters coming out in five years with both your bachelor's and your master's degree. One thing to note is even though we are a large institution, our average class size is still hitting around 30 students and our student teacher ratio is 16 to 1. So what does that mean? Even as a large institution, you still get personalized attention in the classroom. You still get to know who your faculty and staff are, and you get to become a part of their research. Undergraduate research is a really big part of the Mason experience, and one of the reasons uh, that we are very excited about our upcoming uh, partnership with the Amazon headquarters coming right down the road. Uh, so if you're interested in computer engineering, computer science, those programs, a lot of opportunities coming our way. Outside of the classroom, you're going to be looking at a lot of different organizations. Um, when you come to college, it's good to know that our organizations are going to represent our student body, and our student body is a global one. Uh, so we have your traditional and we have your non-traditional. So if the chocolate tasting club is your thing, that's great. Or you could be that student that decides to clock hours in a plane, go up to New York for lunch, flying, come on back and be there for your 7.20 p.m. class. Uh, we are... A uh, number of years ago, ranked the number one pet band in the nation, any college or university, when some website or some entity tells us we're number one in something, we talk about it all the time. Uh, check out Doc Nix and the Green Machine. They are a lot of fun and kind of the heartbeat of our campus. When you are applying, uh, we are both on the common application and our own, but early action is November 1st. It's non-binding. It's priority consideration for our honors college and automatic consideration for merit-based scholarship. If you hit submit by November 1st, you are automatically considered for that merit aid. We'll let students know uh, this upcoming year. Uh, we'll be releasing decisions right before winter break hits. So by the time you are leaving your high school to really take a break from that first semester back to normal, hopefully, you will have a decision in hand, not only for the Honors College, but also your merit scholarship. If early action is not for you, we have moved our regular decision deadline for a long time. It was uh, January 15th. We have uh, put that to February 1st now. 
Those notifications will go out on a rolling basis. Uh, and then just the always plug, please, please, please make sure you fill out that FAFSA. It can only help you. Our mid 50th percentiles are right here. That is an average. That is not a minimum nor a maximum. Uh, one thing to note about Mason is we are a test optional institution. We always, um, we always try to do whatever we can to read students holistically, but for over a decade, we reviewed students without those standardized test scores. So that will not be changing this upcoming year or any year following. When you look at how we review students, you are a product of the environment you are in, and we evaluate you based on that. So no matter which deadline you apply for, whether it's the November 1st or the February 1st, uh, all students that are admissible will get the decision they deserve. Uh, we are open for tours. We are touring six days a week now, uh, twice a day. We're also doing virtual sessions still if you're not ready to come out and see campus. Uh, but if you'd like to take that virtual tour to get ready for an in-person tour, uh, these are the sites for you to check out. Uh, please know that right now we are still doing uh, condensed tours. So we're not doing the full uh, 50, 60 plus person sessions. We are keeping it socially distanced for now. Uh, but we are going to be open in the fall. Uh, housing will be up and running at full capacity. And we are very excited to be able to see you all in person again. Uh, some of our main admissions contact information is there for you on the bottom left of your screen, along with our social handles. If you have any questions, I look forward to chatting with you the rest of the evening. But thank you so much and have a great night. Great. Thank you, Patrick. OK, next up, we are going to Virginia Commonwealth University. Great. Thank you, Tyler. Um, let me just share my screen real quick here. Um, welcome. Uh, my name is Beth. I'm with the admissions office at VCU. And we also have uh, a couple other folks here tonight, Ross and Nick, who are with our Wilder School. And I believe they're going to do a, a specific presentation after I finish this general presentation about VCU. Um, just to kind of give you a broad overview of the university, we are a research-based urban university. We're very diverse um, and we are located right in the heart of Richmond, Virginia. Um, if you have not been to Richmond, it is a great mid-sized city, uh, the capital of Virginia. Uh, it's, it's a very manageable city. Um, and, and is great for our students, not only for uh, work opportunities, but just a lot of great things happening in the city that they can take advantage of. Um, just to kind of give you a little um, uh, look uh, to, to get your bearings here. Uh, this is the edge of the VCU campus uh, in the foreground of the top left picture. And then in the background is sort of the business district of uh, Richmond. Uh, so that's really walking distance from campus. And in between is the state capitol. Uh, so that is a, a great place for uh, our students to get different uh, internships and uh, opportunities, uh, specifically in the Wilder School. Um, and the other great thing besides, you know, having a wonderful city to explore is that we have a great working relationship with um, a number of businesses and nonprofit organizations and Fortune 500 companies. Uh, so our students can get jobs and internships and do some great networking uh, while they're still undergraduates. Um, and I mentioned a little earlier um, that uh, we're, we're, we've got a great city. It's in a great location. Uh, we're about two hours from DC. And uh, if you like the outdoors, we're about two hours from uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains and Virginia Beach. So a lot of things very close by to campus. Um, and then if you do like the outdoors, the James River runs right through uh, Richmond and it's, it's walking distance from campus. Um, our campus itself is really another community within the city. So uh, again, even though we're urban, uh, you feel like you're on a college campus. There's a lot happening for our students, uh, 500 clubs and organizations, uh, fine and performing arts, uh, division one sports, as well as club teams and intramurals and a fantastic workout facility. Uh, so students can get involved no matter uh, what their level is. Uh, we have about 70 majors and an additional 70 minors in certificate programs. So just a, a wealth of diversity, not only among our student body, but um, among what they are uh, uh, studying, uh, things they're getting involved in. Um, so there's really something for everyone. 
Uh, now we are large, um, I would say mid to, to large size, uh, about 24,000 undergraduates, but our average class size is about 27 and our student faculty ratio is about 18 to one. So even though we're on the larger side, we do try to do things to, to make the campus feel smaller and make sure that students get the individual attention they need. Uh, students have academic uh, advisors who will help them through this whole process. Uh, we have career services that we encourage students to take advantage of right from their first year. Uh, we have a special workshop to help students uh, make that transition from high school to college. Um, so we do really value, obviously, student success in making sure that you have all the tools and resources um, to reach all of your goals. And, and we are definitely there for you every step of the way. Uh, I mentioned all of our different majors. Uh, we do have um, our majors kind of fit into our different schools and colleges. Um, every student, no matter what their major is, has the opportunity to pursue uh, research. We have about $335 million worth of research available. That's for um, not only our STEM type students, but um, any student, no matter what their major, can, can take advantage of, of either designing their own major, or I'm sorry, research, or working with um, some of our faculty who, who are uh, engaged in research. Um, we do have a, a College of Engineering, which is very hands-on. We have a top-notch medical school. We also have the number two ranked uh, fine arts program and in the country. And then we also have very good programs um, in business and education. Um, and of course, we're going to talk more about the government programs uh, as well as we go along. Uh, for students who want to um, kind of uh, explore the world, we have um, a pretty extensive uh, study abroad program. Uh, everything from one week program to a full year and we can pretty much get you anywhere in the world. Uh, even if you have never, um, you know, thought about this, you don't know the first thing about it, we have a, a whole department that will work with students just to take them through the whole process and be with you every step of the way. So uh, if it's something you want to pursue, it's, it's definitely available. Um, one thing I, I for, uh, forgot to mention earlier it, when I was talking about the opportunities in the city, uh, we do have um, about half of our students do two or more internships before they graduate. Um, so there's definitely that opportunity. Um, as you can see from the pictures, there's a lot happening outside the classroom. Uh, we have one of the most energetic and exciting uh, pep bands in the country. We have a monthly shark tank. So students, um, if they have a, a business idea, um, they can uh, pitch it and maybe get some money to start their own business while they're a student. Uh, and we also have a, um, a great number of different uh, collaborative opportunities for students. We have our Da Vinci Center, which uh, students from engineering, business, uh, fine arts, and uh, humanities work together with an outside company to develop a new product. Uh, so they're getting some great hands-on opportunities in some real-world experiences uh, right when they're an undergrad. Um, so I think I, I, I forgot to set my alarm, so I don't know if I'm uh, uh, early or late, but uh, this gives you at least a good overview of VCU. If you do have further questions, uh, my name and email is right there, and I do encourage you to reach out to me. I'm happy to help in any way I can, um, and I think that um, we're going to hear a little bit more from Wilder next. Thanks for coming tonight. Perfect. Yes, Wilder is up next. So, Ross, that is you. Great. Thank you. Um, thank you all for being here with us this evening. Uh, I appreciate this opportunity to share a little bit more specifically about the Wilder School at VCU. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Let me check my screen share. I'll be real brief. Um, the Bell Douglas Wilder School of Government and Public Affairs at VCU informs public policy through cutting edge research and community engagement while preparing our students to be leaders in the public sector. Um, as Beth mentioned, we're located in downtown Richmond, just blocks from the state capital and a two hour drive from DC. So we are able to provide our students with hands-on opportunities and practical experience to use in their careers. We emphasize experiential learning, meaning that our students have the opportunity to take what they've learned in the classroom and put it into practice in the real world regardless of their degree program. And I'll actually pop back as I forgot to mention out loud that 
Our uh, undergraduate majors are in criminal justice with concentrations in justice and forensic crime scene investigation. Uh, we also have programs in homeland security and emergency preparedness uh, and urban and regional planning. Um, and each year we place many students in internships, gaining real world experience working for the Secretary of the Commonwealth, the House of Delegates, the Office of Public Safety and Homeland Security, and the Richmond City Sheriff's Office, among numerous other opportunities. Um, the Wilder School connects students from day one to make sure that they have the resources they need to succeed. Um, our Office of Student Success provides engagement activities and opportunities that foster career development and academic excellence among our Wilder School students. We support internships, as I mentioned, also fellowships, scholarships, career opportunities, and outreach for partnerships within the government and public affairs professional community. Our graduates go on to work in the US Secret Service. They serve as legislators and found nonprofit agencies, among many other prestigious and meaningful career paths. Um, this is an, an exhaustive list, and I know it can be a lot to take in, but I hope it gives you an idea of uh, the great things that our graduates go on to achieve. Um, and when you enroll in the Wilder School, uh, you're also entering into a community. We have a number of student organizations like Ada Lambda Sigma, the Professional Homeland Security Fraternity, uh, also the National Association of Blacks and Criminal Justice, uh, the Urban and Regional uh, Planning Student Association, among others that will help you feel at home with peers who come from a wide range of backgrounds, but are all working towards the same goals. Um, and so I will uh, end my time there and just in conclusion say that the Wilder School, uh, at the Wilder School, you'll find rigorous academic programming, hands-on learning opportunities, and a community of faculty and students that will all prepare you for success at VCU and in your life after graduation. Um, and please think of this as the beginning of a conversation rather than the end of one. Um, I'll put my contact information in the chat and um, I'm also here to help support any questions that come in through the Q&A. So um, please feel free to ask any questions about our programs there and I'd be happy to help you. Uh, thank you very much. Great, thank you, Ross. Okay, uh, I'll echo what Ross said and say, if anyone has any additional or any questions at all, now would be a great time to throw those in the Q&A section. Uh, so we can respond. But with that, we'll move to Jose from the University of Richmond. Awesome, thank you. Let me share my screen. And one second, there we go. Perfect. So real quick, my name is Jose Garcia. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions for Diversity Outreach and Partnerships here at the University of Richmond. A um, little bit about us guys, we're actually located six miles from downtown Richmond. Um, as you can see, we're about, I say not a small, not a medium, but a medium kind of school. We're about 3,200 students. We do have our own law school and our own grad school. Um, for us, typical class size, 99% of our classes are less than 30 people. As you can see, just a couple of stats about us, over 90% of our kids do live on campus all four years. We do guarantee housing for all four years. Um, we have an eight to one student faculty ratio. One thing we're very proud of is, we're one of the few schools in the nation that actually meet 100% demonstrated need, which means we give one of the most generous financial aid packages out there. On top of that too, for us, we are also a school that is need blind in the admissions process, which means that we do not look at your financial situation when making a decision. So a little bit about us, we do offer a lot of when it comes on campus, we are a division one school. We do have 17 division one sports here on our campus, over 180 different clubs and organizations, 32 different club sports. One thing we talk about here at University of Richmond is the giving you the resources, the yes mentality. One of those is called the Richmond Guarantee. We guarantee every student at least one summer, if not multiple summers, you'll get up to $4,000 in a grant, not a loan. And this you can use for any career path. So any career path mentality. So you think about internship doesn't pay you, pay yourself. Once the country kind of opens up more, if you have an internship around the country, around the world, and it doesn't cover your housing, pay for your own housing. And then after that, um, what do you call them? From that point, you can use it towards research or anything of that nature. And I said it's guaranteed one summer. You can use it multiple summers. So students can get it two, if not three times. Also, one thing we're very proud of, we want you to go explore the world. We are the second most studied abroad school in the nation. 67% of our students, who, why is this thing not moving? Here we go. 67% of our students will actually go abroad at one point or another, either for a week, a summer, 
or entire semester. You can study abroad multiple times, be it for multiple semesters, multiple summers, or like I said, doing multiple trips around the, around the world. Over 90% of our kids will get some sort of grant or scholarship to do this study abroad. So again, we're helping you out financially. We never want to have finances be the reason you can't do something. And this is a glimpse of some of our students that are doing things around the world prior to COVID, kind of gives a glimpse from there. These are some of the rankings we have. We have been proud of this, ranked by the Princeton Review as the number one most beautiful campus out there. And you see some things that we're very proud of. We are ranked number 22 nationally as a, one of the number 22 liberal arts college out there. So we have some outstanding academics out there. When you talk about Richmond, you talk about the Ivy League, you talk about the MITs of the world. So outstanding academics for our students. This kind of gives a glimpse of who we are there, but I'll talk about our academics. We actually have three colleges here. When you walk into University of Richmond as a freshman, you have to come in undeclared. You cannot pick a major. The reason for that is we want you to take time, figure out what you want to do. Also, what's awesome about our place, two thirds of our students will actually double major. That means they'll graduate with two degrees and about 30% of our kids will actually graduate with three or more degrees. And what's awesome is you can crisscross colleges. You have our school of, um, our School of Arts and Science, but about 70% of our kids will actually go there. We have our School of Business, and then we have what we're proud of. We're the first university ever in the country to have a Jeb's uh, School of Leadership Studies, which basically works on leadership skills. But here you can crisscross colleges. You can get a degree in business and leadership studies or arts and science leadership studies. Whatever you can think of, we want to help you from there. We're a very diverse campus. If you look at our campus right now, you see this is last year's class. We come from all over the country and all over the world. Over 27% of our kids identify as U.S. students of color, about 11% are international. We are represented, and this is just the incoming class, but overall, all 50 states and over 90 different countries. 16% of our kids actually identify as non-native speakers, and about 13% of our kids identify as first-gen students, either the first in their family to get a degree. I will be honest with you, we are a very selective institution. This past year, we had over 14,000 applications. We only admitted about 3,700 students. This shows you a little bit of the glimpse of the student we have. Average GPA or the middle 50%, we do recalculate on the 4.0 scale. We are a test optional school. So for us, you have the option to go and test or test optional. You are not penalized either way. And for us, we want to show you that a lot of our students are taking high achieving courses. They're taking honors, AP, IB, dual enrollment courses, but they are pushing themselves in the classroom. We are very holistic. We are looking at you as the whole person. So we want to see you from your essay, your activities, all you do across the board, because we want the complete person. We want that student's going to make an impact, not on our campus, but in this entire world. This is a glimpse of what we are looking for when you're applying. We are common app or coalition application. We do have a supplemental essay called the Richmond question, which is required. And for us, we do require transcripts. We do look for secondary score report, recommendation letters. Again, test scores, they are optional. We do super score, and along with your first quarter, first trimester grades. We do have three different plans for us. We are an early decision school. We are also an early action as well as, an er as a regular decision school. So it gives you the dates right there. We do have ask you to, if you're looking to apply for merit aid, that you do apply by December 1st to be considered for any merit aid on our campus. When applying for any kind of um, financial aid on our campus, we do require two forms. We require the FAFSA, and the CSS profile. About 39% of our kids actually will receive, well, are getting some sort of aid. Again, it's open to everybody. Always want to reiterate, we do give 100% demonstrated need and need blind in the admissions process. We are not only financial aid, we do offer all types of scholarships out there. We are, again, with our two merit scholarships, our Richmond Scholars, along with our Presidential Scholars. We do offer different types. We do offer music, theater, and dance scholarships. We are Division I schools. We have athletic scholarships. Bonner scholars, if you have a passion for helping people out, volunteering, things that nature, we offer those scholarships as well as ROTC scholarships. For us here, guys, you're talking about collaborative education. The fact that you're gonna get a chance to be, we have the second ranked career services office in the entire nation. So for us, 98% of our kids will do at least one internship on their campus, again, having the Richmond guarantee is phenomenal. That $4,000 you can use any which way possible helps you from there, be it from summer internships, like I said, study abroad, everything from there. Again, any questions, guys, please take a snapshot of this. This is my contact information. Please feel free to reach out to us. We are doing visits now for our students right now in limited versions. So please look online if you're looking to visit us this coming summer. Look forward to hearing from you guys. And again, any questions, reach out to me. Thank you, guys. Great, thank you. Okay, well that wraps up our formal presentations. We have a few extra minutes here at the end, so we are going to do some Q&A. So students, if you have any questions, now would be a great time to drop those in the Q&A box. For our panelists, if you want to join me back on screen, we are going to ask a few questions. And the first question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we will go in the same order that you started in. 
Um, I, I would say, I think my biggest piece of advice would be to get to know yourself. Um, I think doing a lot of introspection um, before your college search is going to be very helpful in finding the school that feels right to you. So the better you know you, the better you're going to know what you're looking for and whether that's a major campus environment or um, clubs or organizations you would want to get involved with. Get to know yourself a little bit better. So start asking those big questions about what you want to get out of you know, your four years. I would say, I think um, it's okay to not have everything figured out. Um, you don't have to know what you're gonna major in. You don't have to know what your first job is going to be, but I think it's good to identify um, where you might need help. Um, and I think choosing a right college is about knowing um, where you will be challenged, but also where you're going to be comfortable enough to ask for help and have the supports to be successful. Um, so you don't have to have everything figured out or have all the answers. So um, don't put so much pressure on yourself. It's okay. A lot of us on this call are still trying to figure it out, I would I would bet. Um, but I think it's, it's knowing um, how to identify an environment where you're going to feel supported um, and be challenged um, to be able to grow in those four years. So that would be my advice. I tell students all the time, you know, it doesn't matter where you go to school, north, south, east, west, public, private, it's all personal preference. And it's the best time in your life to be selfish and selfish in the best way possible because you know yourself better than anyone else does. So you have folks there, you have those of us on this call, you have folks in your high school, you have your friends and family. They're all there to help you, uh, but you, the students, should make sure you are taking an active participant role in your college search process because you get to live the experience. So ask for help along the way, but really focus on what's important to you, not what's important to someone else. My advice uh, would be to keep an open mind. Um, hopefully you'll be able to do some additional visiting this uh, summer and fall and visit different types of schools. Uh, you have a lot of different schools on this call right now. Um, and if you can get to different schools, I think it's gonna be, become more clear what the right fit for you is. Quick story, my niece uh, visited 27 schools. Uh, they were all sort of the same type of school and she couldn't understand why she didn't like any of them. And, Finally, she tried a, a something very different and, and it finally clicked. So hopefully you can uh, get it to click earlier in the process than she did. Uh, great advice from everyone. And I think uh, just to reiterate some of the points, um, be uh, aware that uh, this is an investment in your future. And uh, to that end, you really need to be comfortable in advocating for yourself. Um, know that all of us here and all of your advisors, all of your instructors, they all, they're all in your corner. They want you to succeed. And so if you're struggling uh, or if you have questions or if there's something about your experience that isn't meeting your needs, let us know. Uh, because more often than not, we'll be able to help you. And the only way we'll know is if you tell us. And my last piece, I would say this is enjoy the process, enjoy the present. Do not overlook, do not start thinking, oh my God, next year, next year, next year. Guys, enjoy your senior year. Enjoy the time you're having this. Enjoy selecting a school. Enjoy all of that because you're never going to get it back. You will have your time. You will find your home. I guarantee that right now, but enjoy the process, guys, and enjoy the present right now. All great advice. We have time for one more question, and that is, what is your favorite event or tradition on your campus? Um, I know I, I mentioned it uh, at the beginning of my presentation, but our honor code signing is, is one that holds it for me. Um, again, everyone's kind of exhausted that first night, uh, but it's, it's a formal ceremony. It's pretty solemn to us, coat and tie. Um, but that first night, all the guys walk through our bell tower um, single file, and we have a plaque in Latin that says Huc Venite Uvenes, which is enter here as youths. Um, and so they pass underneath that plaque four years later, they walk through the bell tower the opposite direction to go to our graduation uh, ceremony. And there's another plaque in Latin that says, Ut ete ate sweri, which is so that you may leave as men, um, which is a, an inscription that's written on our gates. I think that's pretty cool. So that's mine. 
I would say one of my favorite traditions is um, the spring fountain event, which is where um, we have a big campus-wide picnic and um, the fountain is turned on for the first time in the spring. It's turned off traditionally mid-November through the first part of April, um, but the fountain is at the heart of campus. It's where a lot of um, Randolph-Macon romances happen, a lot of study groups take place, um, a, lot, a lot of great memories. Um, uh, alumni young and old um, uh, have around the fountain and so um, it's just a really great tradition it's it's really the first um, event in the new year that everyone can be outside and gather and especially this spring it was more meaningful than I think ever um, in years past just for all of us to come together as a community socially distanced and masked of course but just to be able to see each other and have some good music and, and some good good food around the fountain, um, our central heart of campus. So that would be my favorite campus tradition. Uh, Mason, for me, would be our international week. Uh, having so many students from all over the globe and our central uh, student union will put a flag up of each and every country that's represented on our campus. Uh, and then it's a week long festival celebrating culture with performances, with food, uh, and just getting to know your other students and normalizing uh, a lot of what you don't see if you are from the US. Uh, so that's an incredible week. And again, just the food. You, you can't underscore how amazing it is for folks to just come out and hang out in the quad next to all the construction uh, and enjoy some of that culture. So uh, VCU's man mascot is the Ram. And in front of our student center, we have a sculpture of giant ram horns. And uh, the tradition is that uh, during orientation, students uh, touch the, the ram horn and kind of make a wish or set some goals for their next four years. And then uh, they get their picture taken. And then they come back on graduation day or around then and kind of reflect on the last four years, get their picture taken again, and, and just hopefully have uh, reach their goals. Uh, and the trick is you have to stand about 30 feet in front of the horns so they look like they're actually coming out of your head. So that's kind of a fun one. Um, yeah, that is great. Um, I think I've always really enjoyed the student and volunteer organization fair that happens every year. Um, so many times I talk to students and that's that's kind of where they have the, their first opportunity to find a place that really uh, they fit in and can um, engage with uh, their peers on a one-on-one -on -one basis or, you know, uh, toward similar goals or with similar interests. So that's what I would say. And for Richmond, for me, it's awesome because we bring our entire freshman class into our chapel this year, very um, socially distant and everything. But we do is you walk in, you sign your honor pledge, you get your spider or your class coin, and then you get your flag that was created by the previous class. And you hear from a previous student along with the dean. Then you write a letter to yourself that you'll open four years later. So it's a great thing to see yourself in the beginning to then at the end of the process, but it's awesome to see our young spiders grow and become the awesome spiders that they'll be alumni and represent us throughout the world. Great, thank you all for sharing. That wraps up our presentations for this evening. So students, thank you so much for joining us. When you close the Zoom window, there will be a very quick four question survey. If you don't mind completing that for us, we'd really appreciate any feedback that you have. And then don't forget that all the session recordings will be available at that StriveScan website within about a week or so as well. So thank you again for being here. Have a great evening and we will see you soon.